Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Wade Watches. I'm Wade, and moving right along with my Planet of the Apes uh, trilogy reviews leading up to Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I'm going today. I'm going to be reviewing Dawn of the Planet of the Apes from 2014, directed by Matt Reeves and starring Andy Serkis, Jason Clark, Gary Oldman, and Toby Kebbell. So this film does what a proper sequel does which is to raise the stakes uh coming right off of the events of rise of the planet of the apes uh we are now in a in light spo spoilers if you haven't seen rise of the planet of the apes you might want to click away from this video but we are now in a uh dystopian uh dystopian uh san francisco california in the not too distant future after the simian flu uh from the first movie that was originally meant to be a cure for alzheimer's has uh, wiped out a good portion of the human race and the uh stragglers are um struggling to uh kind of kind of you know restore basically long story short res restore balance and just through pure circumstances um the apes who have now thrived under caesar come into contact with the uh humans and then eventually one thing leads to another and of course their conflict inevitably ensues and that's all you'll get from me you guys know how i roll by now um and if you're new to this channel i try not to summarize the whole movie for you i really like people who watch my reviews to go into a movie knowing a uh, little no details i like to keep it mostly um, you know, based mostly like about my opinion and my overall thoughts of the film. So with that brief synopsis out of the way, this is yet another solid installment in this franchise, uh, pure and simple. And in a lot of ways, it that it improves upon something some of the stuff from uh, rise of the planet of the apes that have minor gripes about though i still consider rise of the planet of the apes a perfect movie i gave it a 10 out of 10 and you can kind of guess w what this one's going to get because i like i said this one actually did improve on uh mostly just one thing for me and that is to that was to actually make the uh human characters in this film just as complex just as intriguing and just as sympathetic as the uh, apes in this film though this is more definitely more of an ape centric film i'd argue um i'd argue uh, argue more a bit more than the uh, first one we get a lot more of uh caesar and the uh, rest of the apes in this movie i felt than we did in that first movie which was essentially the first half you know if you saw my rise review that was like all james franco's story and then and then then it switches to Caesar's movie. This is mostly Caesar and the rest of the apes' movie um, interwoven with, you know, the stuff that the, that those, like, last, um, those few remaining humans, the few who weren't wiped out uh, from the disease, like, kind of interwoven with the story and what they're trying to do. Um, and thankfully, I think because this is, you know, a dystopian setting, because the humans are just, like, just, like, kind of, you know, like, barely hanging on barely able to survive i was more connected to them um what this movie does well also is kind of show and this is you know kind of leads to like kind of that overall message that there there are um assholes on both sides you know um in that conflict between apes and humans uh the, with the human characters there are some good humans you know who, who's harder in the right place who are just trying to uh help along their fellow man and kind of you know restore order to the uh, human race in the midst of this uh dystopian future where most of humanity has been wiped out and on the apes there are you know good good um apes whose heart is are in the right place some of them um don't mind helping out the humans where whereas others are like fuck the humans you know they kept a, they kept us in cages and you know there are human there are humans also who are like you know fuck these apes because you know they're they're wild animals who will probably come to rule us and take us out so you you got you got um good people and assholes on both sides which is that's that's pretty much a summation of um you know every sentient being on this planet earth and i really like how the movie uh showed that and um it also had something to say about how you know um when Fear, fear causes people to, you know, just kind of um, randomly follow whomever, you know, whoever, whoever's the loudest voice in the room, even if, you know, that's probably not the 
person you want to follow. Probably not the wisest person in the world to follow. Like how the movie had something to say about that as well. And um, uh, once again, what really, what really, above all else, what really makes this movie work. Oh, uh, also, uh, b- bigger action sequences in this movie too. Can't forget to talk about that because we do get uh, more elaborate and drawn out um, battle sequences in this movie. Definitely than we do in uh, Rise because Rise, the revolution doesn't, happen pretty much until that last third that last chunk of the movie but here we get a couple of action sequences uh, sprinkled throughout of course the big battle is kind of more near the end of the movie but um but uh, I felt like this one was a bit more action centric um and uh but above all else it's really the characters that make this movie work like I said um the human characters are I was just as invested in them as I was the um, apes, you know, I, just as I was as much as I was in uh, Caesar and he has a family now. And we also have uh, Jason Clark, um, a human character who has a family who just wants to, um, like I said, help restore order to the human race. But, um, you know, Jason Clark is one of the good guys who thinks, you know, maybe we, we uh, us humans and apes can't coexist while other humans and even some of the apes have uh, other ideas and I really really liked seeing that it made for an interesting story I was invested with these guys because they're just barely hanging on but you know his heart's still in the right place he's just trying to you know he, uh, Jason Clark has a family too he's just trying to provide for them Caesar has a family he's just trying to provide for for them so the movie doesn't really pick sides there does come a point where um there is somebody who is obviously meant like yeah this guy he's the bad guy he's the asshole but when you look at him you can't help but think there you know there are humans who would probably do the same thing so is he really that bad or is he just doing all the wrong things for all the right reasons or is he just you know is he just filled with hate who knows um because to me at least how i interpreted it the movie doesn't really give you a straight answer on that and i love antagonists and villains like that where it's like yeah, you might be on to something you're, you're still a dick you're still doing crazy stuff you're, you're, you've taken it a step too far but you, you're you're not wrong. You're not entirely wrong. Love villains like that, and we have a villain like that in this movie. So, um, I really enjoyed uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I um, there again, like I just said, there are things in it that I think um, it improves upon. It is kind of one of those sequels that you could argue is better than the than the original movie. However, um. <sighs> I'm, I, I won't go that far because Rise of the Planet of the Apes really is still a perfect movie, in my opinion, in its own right. And this is so different because it's more dystopian. It, there's, you know, there's more battle sequences. It's, it's pretty much, um, you know, it is straight up like, you know, human humans versus ape with good people and douchebags on um, both sides of the aisle whereas the first one was like straight up let's revolt against the humans so it's really hard for me to compare the two but it is definitely a sequel that's i can say this it's it is a natural progression it steps up from the first one um and you know in a progressive way but i won't say like oh this is definitely better than rise of planet of the apes because i still love that movie but uh dawn of the planet of the apes is is just as perfect and Yet again, I got to give it another uh, perfect 10 out of 10. Loved this. Loved, loved, loved this movie from start to finish. And I, I was even kind of like, I almost choked up at the <laughs> at the end of it, not going to lie. And when a movie does that to me, you know it's good. You know it's perfect. So perfect 10 out of 10 for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Can't wait to uh, wrap up this trilogy recap with War of the Planet of the Apes. Be on the lookout for that soon. This has been another edition of Wave Watches. And I'll see you lovely people next time. Peace.